people are, are, are farming a lot of the, the palm trees so that they could create mm-hmm. the palm oil and one of the things I always tell, you know, people make sure when you do go to grocery stores and try to buy certain things that don't ha- contain that ingredient so that you can, you know, help. Well, what I like to do is reframing it, not just say don't buy it, but mm-hmm. um, check the label to see if it's sustainable well, because yeah, you have choices. Sure. And if, it's, if, you, if you can feel assured that the manufacturer has been vetted by some, you know, third-party NGOs. Right. And that they're using um, sustainably sourced palm oil. Support that because, at the one hand, just just you know, doing a boycott is not going to work. Right. Um, you know, there's literally millions of farmers who are um, have palm oil as smallholders mm-hmm. on their property, and it would be really, I think, um, a disservice uh, and a tragedy if if they were now unable to earn a living right. because they you know they can't sell their their palm oil. Right. Now, there are some studies that have been recently shown that intercropping mm-hmm. uh, other types of vegetation in palm oil plantations actually is a, a benefit mm-hmm. and a good reason why the smallholders' practices of doing polyculture mm-hmm. is yeah. is a good way to go. It's much harder to get the monoculturists, the large-scale you know, industrialists, to uh, move in that direction because they feel that monoculture is the way you maximize mm production rather than optimize say the ecological services as well as your product and we would like to see those big companies start to adopt uh, methodologies like this where they'll start doing demonstrations to show the efficacy of polyculture within their uh, plantations so you know they have to actually many of these big industrial plantations have to have um, forests nearby maintained for biodiversity, but it's certainly not enough. And so yeah. much of the damage has been done. Um, and now we're in a position where we're trying to, of course, remediate the, a lot of the damage and to try to um, not take away an industrial or, or an income stream from Indonesia, right. but to show a better way of, of doing it so they can, um, you know, have a win win. And I think, you know, that's kind of the position we take at the Orangutan Republic Mm -hmm. Foundation. We're a member of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, so we have a vote at the table. And we work together with the other non-government organizations, both the environmental groups and the the social NGOs, to uh, put forward um, initiatives that will improve the... um, you know the the whole notion of what sustainable is, knowing right. full well that yeah. it's it's really there's no such thing as purely sustainable anything, sure. Sure. because there's always there's always a uh, a cost to whatever we do, uh, but we try to we try to do the best we can, right? Uh, and I think it's it's made a difference. So uh, again, getting back to the idea of, of shopping with your pocketbook, yeah. If you do go shopping. Look at the labels, see if there's any indication that, you know, this company, for example, is a member of the RSPO and they've not just made a pledge, but there's actually indicators on some of these apps mm-hmm. that you can download to show that the company is is, uh, is on the good list now right. or is in, improving. Right. And I think that's the best thing we can do, Alex. That's good. No, that's very good. That's really good advice to, to, to know. And, I, and as you said, is there a website up that people can look and maybe check out maybe some of the companies that are doing some of this sustainable work yeah there's uh, Cheyenne Mountain Zoo has a good website I think Cincinnati Zoo many of the zoos surprisingly hmm. have jumped aboard uh, and are members and very um, uh, active members of the RSPO and you know you think about zoos as being a place where you know animals are kept um, behind yeah. bars or sure. behind you know their their freedom has been taken away but they at least have repurposed and they have kind of re, um, um, kind of positioned themselves as being an educational um, format for right. for the public. So they can do things like get involved in, in organizations. They have a budget mm-hmm. to, to assign people and they have a budget to create these apps and these, these really, really nice websites that are, um, that have a lot of good information. Right. El Paso zoo is also another good one so you know cincinnati cheyenne mountain and 
El Paso. They all have uh, good material on their websites, and some of them have apps you can download. So when you go shopping, you can you can check. Good. Well, that's good to know. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for all the information. Now, sure.